when the bidirectional glen is an unfavorable option. Primary extracardiac inferior cavopulmonary connection as an alternative palliation. The superior vena cava to pulmonary artery anastomosis or bidirectional glen is standard palliation for single ventricle physiology. With upper body systemic venous anatomic concerns, such as SVC stenosis, a glen may be precluded or hazardous. The primary extracardiac inferior vena cava to pulmonary artery connection is presented as an alternative palliation, providing generous pathway for pulmonary blood flow and including hepatic factor if such an entity exists. We present the first known case of primary extracardiac IVC to PA connection with successful early follow-up. A three-month-old with hypoplastic left heart syndrome after an uneventful Norwood Sano operation came for routine pre glen evaluation. Echocardiography showed normal ventricular function without semilunar or atrioventricular valve regurgitation. At catheterization, the PBR was 2.94 wood units, the PA pressure is a mean of 15, with adequate pulmonary artery growth. The venogram showed highly unfavorable anatomy for a standard glen with a superior vena cava to PA connection. Here is the venogram showing a thrombosinominate vein, multiple venovenous collaterals between a small right SVC, an accessory hemiazygous, and paravertebral plexuses. Angioplasty attempts were unsuccessful. We deferred the glen to encourage SVC growth without results. At six months of age, surgery was performed by a redo median sternotomy with arterial inflow provided through the prior 3.5 mm Gore-Tex graft to the innominate artery used for the Norwood and right atrial plus low inferior venal cable cannulation. The SVC was mobilized and the azygous vein doubly ligated and transected. Bypass was initiated and the procedure performed at nomothermia on a beating heart. After Sanoshunt takedown, the IVC was transected from the common atrium and the cardiac side over sewn. Intraoperative measurement of the IVC orifice with Hagar dilators disclosed the need for a 14 mm connection. This was fashioned from bovine photofix pericardium. The IVC conduit to anastomosis was performed first. After isolating the pulmonary arteries, the underside was opened, the graft trimmed to fit, and tacked in the corners after the opening. Working first between the aorta and SVC, and then lateral to the mobilized SVC, the conduit to PA anastomosis was performed. Here you see additional cuts in to the right PA to accommodate the graft. After decannulation, the cardiac mass lies in front of the IVC to PA connection without compressing it, and the IVC to PA connection was checked to avoid compressing the pulmonary veins. An intracardiac line was placed for CVP monitoring, and the femoral central venous line placed by anesthesia served as PA pressure monitoring. Here again is an artist's illustration depicting venous cannulation strategy and the extracardiac IVC to PA connection lying partially behind the cardiac mass and the mobilized SVC after transecting the azygous vein. Weaning from bypass was uneventful, with saturations in the low 80s on an FiO2 of 50%. PA pressures via the femoral line were 14 to 18 and RA pressures 4 to 6. Postoperatively, early extubation as per Glenn protocol was done standard low-dose heparin transitioned to aspirin, and after an uneventful three-day ICU stay, chest drains were removed and the infant discharged to home on postoperative day eight. The three-month angiogram and CT scan showed an open IVC to PA connection, no venovenous collaterals, and no hepatic venous congestion. Ten months postoperatively, the saturations are in the mid-80s on room air, there is no ascites, and the baby is feeding and gaining weight normally. In conclusion, Faced with suboptimal upper body systemic venous anatomy, such as SVC stenosis, thrombosis, hypoplasia, or with high risk bilateral SVCs, the primary extracardiac IVC to PA connection is an alternative palliation. If a hepatic factor exists, it is provided with its operation and may preclude pulmonary arteriovenous malformations and progressive worsening cyanosis. A bubble contrast echocardiography or angiography will be planned for our patient. Longer follow-up will tell if an unplanned interstage reoperation is necessary given a non-growing 14 mm conduit, if this is an ideal setup for future Fontan completion with an SVC to PA connection, or if this represents a final palliative stage not needing any further intervention, since this situation is similar with regards to hemodynamics and oxygen delivery to a largely fenestrated Fontan. Thank you.